Simulators are nothing new in FPV. We've had the likes of Liftoff and Velocidrone for quite a few years now. Uh, they were around before I started, so I spent about 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> I've been playing drone sims for 30 years. 30 hours. I spent about 30 hours in the sim before I flew my first real quad. So yeah, they're nothing new. But today I want to talk about DCL The Game, which is a new sim on the block. It only came out a few days ago. But the interesting thing about it is they have a console release, like a fully boxed retail console version. This is with a PS4 and they also have it for the Xbox One as well. When I saw this, I thought immediately, is there a way to get it so you can use your normal radio with your console version of the sim? Because it's quite compelling, I'm not going to lie, it's quite compelling to have a big screen TV with the sim on and you're just sitting on your sofa and you can play for hours then quite comfortably. Is it possible? So I have good news and bad news. The good news is you can. There is a way to use your normal radio with a PlayStation 4 or probably an Xbox. I haven't tested that, but I'm sure it's possible as well. Uh, and it will control like, and it will feel like a proper sim. Uh, the bad news is it costs you a hundred pounds. Half of you have probably switched off now and gone to another video. But for those that are interested, you require one of these. And this is called a Titan 2 by Console Tuner. Here's, a, here's an unboxing. Oh yeah, it's unboxed. Here is... Oh shit. So what this is usually used for is uh, pro gamers and people that are really ultra competitive, they'll have some preference. They either prefer a PlayStation controller or they prefer the Xbox Elite controller or something. And what this is designed for is so they can use any controller on any console. So you can plug an Xbox controller into here and then you can plug this into a PlayStation 4 and it will work and vice versa. You can plug a, you can plug a Nintendo Wii remote in there and use it to play uh, Guitar Hero. You know, this can do any kind of translation between the known controllers. So on hearing this, the first thing I did was rush out and buy one of these and then plugged it into my computer and started programming a remapping setup for a drone controller so I could use the PlayStation controls. And when I got it set up and working kind of like most of the way there, just enough to sort of play the game, I was quite excited that it was working at all, but I noticed there's a big flaw. And that is that these things have a massive dead zone. We're talking about 25% of the stick movement is zero. There is nothing in the middle. And as you know, if you've ever flown drones, you kind of use every single part of the gimbal. So imagine you're now using this and the drone doesn't start moving until you get to about there. And that is really, really weird. So yes, so the, the Titan 2, which I'm glad I brought this one, I didn't start with the Titan 1, you can program stuff. So I made a script that takes the dead zone away. How it does that is it turns 75% of this stick into 100% of this stick. So as soon as you move it a slight amount, it actually goes straight to 25% and then onwards. So that is how the dead zone is removed. It's sort of more complicated maths than that, but you don't need to worry about that because I'm gonna provide a script so you can do all this yourself if you wanna buy one of these. So anyway, let's go through how you set this up yourself. So first up, I am using a beta flight flight controller because I think that's the most generic way to allow all sorts of different radios to work with one settings file that I'm gonna provide. Because if you use this, doesn't matter what receiver you use, doesn't matter what protocol you're using, uh, beta flight will always send the same HID uh, output to a computer or to this thing when we plug it in. There is one line that you have to type in beta flight CLI, which will be on your screen now. Da, 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 da. Set USB HID C something something equals on and then save that. And then this bit will be picked up as a joystick in your um, in your game controllers in Windows. And then when you wiggle your controls in real life, you'll see things move on the uh, Windows uh, game controller screen. That's how you know you've set up the USB HID on your beta flight controller. And that's actually really cool to use as a dongle if you ever want to use Sims on the PC as well. You can just use a wireless controller that way. For the more tricky bit, we have to set up the Titan 2 to convert the output from that flight controller to input a PlayStation 4 can understand. For that, you need to go on the intranet to a site called consoletuner.com and you need to download GTuner 4. That is the software you use to configure this thing. So just look on their website for, I think it's in support, downloads, and then GTuner 4 for Windows. 
download that. Once you've downloaded GTuner 4, also download the zip file that is in the description. That is what I have made. It is two files, uh, bf underscore hid dot git and bf underscore hid dot gpc. These are two files that we need to load into GTuner 4 and install on our Titan 2 and they will allow us to use our radio with our PlayStation 4. So go ahead and plug it in to the prog port on the back. There's two ports on the back, two micro USB ports. One says prog, one says output. Use the prog one, plug it in, and then open GTuner 4 on your computer. At the bottom in the output window, it should say connect Titan 2. That means that it has been detected and everything's working fine. On the right, you'll see three memory slots. One, two, three, they should all be empty if this is new. Now, it's very simple. What you have to do is find those files on your computer that you downloaded from the description. So there's the, uh, where are the bf underscore hd.git and bf underscore hd.gpc. If you double click on any one, it will just open in the appropriate editor in the software. So double click on the git and that will show you that is the control remapping. If you double click the GPC file, that is a script file and that does all the magic. So it is a very simple process to install these files to the uh, Titan 2. Uh, you just double click one. So I've double clicked the GIT file, which is an input translator. And then I just click this little button here and press memory stick one. You'll notice on the right now that Betaflight HID conversion has been installed to memory stick memory slot one. And then I'll double click on the script file and then do the same thing. Uh, click here, memory stick one. And now you'll see there are two files loaded into memory slot one. That is it. What you can do while it's plugged in is once you've loaded those things to the memory slot, you can click, right click and select load memory slot and then that will all be set up as if it is uh, plugged into the PS4. Now you can plug the, the beta flight flight controller into the first USB slot on the left and then use your radio and move around. And you should see things move in the device monitor. Uh, so if I flick the switches which are assigned to the aux channels, I can see that this one is the cross button, this one is triangle button, uh, this one is circle button, and this one is options. So those are the buttons that I've assigned. I don't think the square is very useful in DCL. I think there's like one use case for it, which is to view a tutorial. And once you've seen that once, you don't need to see that again. Um, yeah, so all the sticks are assigned. You will notice that when you move the right, the right stick on your radio, is that the R2, L2, and R1 and L1 buttons also activate at certain points. That's because I've had to do that because you need to use L2 and R2 to scroll between levels. But obviously with only four aux channels, I can't have those on a button. So this stick does two things and it, they don't conflict with each other in the game, I have checked. So that was the easiest way to set that up. All right, once that's all loaded up, let's go plug it into the PlayStation and uh, show you how to sort that part out. So once the Titan 2 is all ready, now all we have to do is set up the PlayStation to work with it. So for that, you just there's just one setting you need to change on the PlayStation, and that is to go to Settings, Devices, Controllers, Communication Method, and make sure you use USB cable is ticked. If you plug the Titan 2 into the console, it will start working with the radio, but you'll notice this thing flashes AU, this little screen here. And that means that it needs to authenticate with the console. And the way that, that you do that is you plug a actual DualShock controller into the other port and then it works. Now it says zero, which is the memory slot that is loaded. That means no memory slots loaded. We put all our files into memory slot one. So just press one of these buttons and then there's a number one appears and that's it. Everything will start working. Right, so now to prove that this is superior than a 360 or a PlayStation controller, as we all know, let's be honest, I'm gonna, I'm not a racer and I'm going to attempt one of the races. I'll do one of the easy ones because, as I say, I'm not a racer. But I will try and get a top 10 time. Let's do LAX Green Run Race. I'm not a racer, but because I'm using this, this is going to give me a competitive edge over people that are using PlayStation controllers. And with all the Dead Zone stuff set up, it feels pretty good. I am currently 51. Okay. I'm going to need to change my camera angle. My camera angle is still set to freestyle, but you see, I don't need to pick up the PlayStation controller to do this. I can still do all this with my with my remote because I've set up all those switches to be those buttons. Okay, I like 45. Let's go. All right. Through the big M. Round here we go. Take two. 
This is how I race. Not well. <laughs> Jesus, how are people doing this? You know what's crazy is these people probably all use PlayStation pads as well. Unless everybody's worked out this little secret. Okay. You going good? Still in? Damn it. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can get first. That's the challenge. For a non-racer, that's probably quite difficult. <laughs> Such as myself. I'm allowed that one, that's cool. 20 seconds. Come on. Woo -doosh. All right, first place, easy peasy. Okay, so there you go, a non-racer, first place in like first attempt, basically. Well, there you go, that's it. It is possible to use your radio with the PS4 version of DCL the game. Uh, and as you saw, a noob like me can get sixth place, which is fairly competitive, only after about half an hour of messing around on that track. So if you're a good racer and you do this, then you're likely to mop the floor with everyone. Right, onto the giveaway. Last video, we picked the R9 sort of selection of things. There's a module in here for a JR Bay. There's a whole bunch of receivers, a whole bunch of antennas, and the Cyclone 5050 props as well. So yeah, let's find out who has won that now, and then we'll get on to giveaway for this video. Good luck, everybody. Right, so the winner of the R9 goodie bag and the Cyclone props is... Vincent, congratulations dude. He says, interesting effect, makes it look really cinematic. I don't really watch FPV flying videos, but for short clips, it looks nice. Well mate, uh, I hope you fly them. Even if you don't watch FPV videos, I do hope you fly because you have just won all the R9 goodies. All you have to do is check in the description below and there's an email address, just get in touch with me and we'll take it from there. As for everybody else, uh, we obviously have a prize uh, for you guys for this video. This is a special one. I don't need the box for this because this is something that I've had planned for a little while. And it is a set of six uh, Hype Train Vortex 2650 KV motors. Now I'm giving these away as a set of six because four of them are, have been used about twice. So they really haven't had a lot of flight time, but it does mean that I have cut the cables down because I used to run single ESCs. So you will need to either use race wire or use single ESCs if you want to use these, something to be mindful of. But yeah, apart from that, they are in as good as new condition. Two of them are brand new and still in their box and four of them are loose. All you have to do is leave a dollar sign in a comment below. So the last video was the stabilizing freestyle FPV footage using Real Steady. Uh, thanks to everyone for watching. Had 1,000 views, which is cool. I don't normally break the 1,000 barrier, but let's have a read of the comments, see what everybody had to say. Skyseeker says, I feel like the background moves, moves in an unnatural way with Real Steady Go. Have noticed? Yeah, I think what he's talking about there is because Real Steady Go does a inverted, it inverts the fisheye effect. So instead of using uh, fisheye, 
instead of seeing a fish eye, you see like a pincushion effect at the corners. And you don't usually notice that with cinematic stuff because it crops in quite a lot. So the pincushioning on the, on the corners you don't notice, but with, with freestyle, you kind of want to keep as much in the field of view. So with the lowest smoothing, um, that means that you don't crop in much, which means that the pin cushioning is quite obvious in the corners. So that's kind of what's going on there. Reese FPV says, that's awesome. Now I need a new cam. I'm still rocking the Session 4 on Super Sweet Footage. So the Session 4 is pretty cool, dude. I don't think that's a terrible camera. If you want to use Real Steady though, or you want to do anything like that, the Hero 6 now is, uh, it actually goes pretty cheap now. I've seen them for about 150 pounds in the UK, which is not too bad at all for the quality of camera that you're getting. Graham Bish says, just got back into FPV again after a local kid in my village found my drone in a tree after three years. Holy crap, that's amazing. Only motors needed. Well, it sounds like quite a lot of it survived then, dude. That's amazing. Uh, so if you do need motors, um, video, this video, the giveaway on this video is motors. So you're golden, mate. Enter and you never know. Major Lee says GoPro 8 can be hard mounted. Yeah, that is true. I didn't know about this because there was an update on Real Steady that included Hero 8 support uh, while I was doing the video. So I didn't have time to mention that in the video, but if you check in the description, the Hero 8 is actually probably the best camera to get if you want the best footage. Um, it is expensive, so the Hero 6 is still a good budget option, but those are the only two I think that you can hard mount. Everything else you have to use a weird soft mount. That was from the Real Steady Go video. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you very much to everyone for watching. I hope you found it interesting or entertaining. I'll try not to leave it too long till the next one. All right, take it easy, bye bye.